folks. Welcome to another Wednesday night. Uh, we weren't here last Wednesday because uh, the first Wednesday is, uh, of the month is always uh, for our uh, first Wednesday meeting. And we have uh, a little dinner before and, and then we have our service. I got to tell you, Sunday was super here. Uh, 13 people got baptized. A number of them were youth. Uh, and uh, last the week before last in youth group, uh, eight, eight kids came to the Lord and I think 14 got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a time. God is on the move, doing great things. You need to pray for the, the youth and the younger generation because they need Jesus as much as the older folks, right? Amen. Well, I'm going to talk about finishing your course. Imagine that. I've been doing that. But it's so important that we run our race. Each one of us has a race to run. And it's important that we stick to it. Don't give up. Don't quit. And Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, you've heard me speak of this about every time, in, cha in verse 6, chapter 4, verse 6, he says, For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. How many of you know everybody's going to leave this, this people planet someday? If Jesus, you know, if he hasn't returned, we're going to go. And we've got to know where we're going, and we've got to run our race and finish our race. And he says, I'm, I'm, I've been poured out as a drink offering. In other words, I've done the things I'm supposed to have done during my time. And he goes on to say, I have fought the good fight. How I many of you know there is a good fight? There's a fight going on all the time, but the good fight is the good fight of faith where we stand the course of time. Don't give up. Don't back off. Amen? Amen. I have finished the race. A lot of people start a race and a lot of people don't finish. You know, we... Uh, unfortunately, in, in the, in the uh, church, it's the same way. People get excited. They come emotionally, get turned on to the things of God. Then they don't continue. If you don't continue, you're not going to know what the Bible says. And many times you'll mistake what, what you think is what's God and what isn't God. Listen, good theology, good God, bad devil. <laughs> if you can put those in context of everything you do, if something bad's happening to you, Listen, you've either put it in pra uh, pa uh, practice or you know it's the devil. It's the devil that's caused you to, to do wrong things. God says, I've only come to bring you good things. And then he goes on to say, I've finished this race. In other words, he, he may have fallen down somewhere along the line. I don't read it, but he could have fallen down a little bit, but he got right back up. He got, he was beaten, shipwrecked time and again, uh, left for dead imprisoned all the time, all those things would have impeded his race. But he says, none of these things bother me. None of these things grab me. Why? Because he had a determination that he was going to finish the course that God had put him on. Amen? I have kept the faith <clears throat> so vital that we keep the faith. Keep the faith. In other words, don't give up. You know, many people are uh, in the world today. They want to give up. A lot of it has to do with how they uh, view things or their feelings. Listen, your feelings can be fickle. They can be up one day and down the next, or up one moment and down the next. But you got to stay the course. you got to stand in faith. I have decided, you know, there's an old song, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. No others may go a different way. I'm going on with him. Amen? That's the resolve you have to have. So Paul's saying that. But he says, finally, there's laid up for me the, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, how many of you know he's a righteous judge? Amen? Amen. Will give me, to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. In other words, all those that have served him, loved him, followed after him, you're going to get a crown of righteousness. Amen? But there are enemies. We've talked about this. I'm going to review some of these because it's so important to know the word of God and what, what's attacking you and what can get you off course and, and distract you and get you going the wrong way. And the number one thing that can knock us off course is we have to know Satan. What does he come? John 10.10. 10. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy but Jesus is the great word that follows that is, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not just life, but abundant life. Listen, when you know Jesus Christ, you can have an abundant life. 
listen, the things we know on earth are going to pass away. He, he wants us to, to be successful. He wants us. But the most important thing, I've decided to follow Jesus. I know him. I've got to know him. Paul said that was one of his greatest desires uh, when, when he, after he had completed so many things in Philippians chapter 3. It was kind of like after he talked about all the things he had done, which he considered just rubbish, you know. It, it, there were good things, but there were ru things that were rubbish too. You know, he just, I, I'm not thinking back on those things, he said. He said, but what do you want to know, Paul? I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Isn't that amazing? After serving God all that time, he still wants to know more. That should be our desire, friends. Well, I've been a Christian 40 years, and I've done this, and I've done that, and I've done my share. Listen, don't say that. Say, I want to know him even more than I know, because there are things I don't know, and I want to get to know him more and more and more. That should be our resolve. That should be our uh, mantra, so to speak. Now, it also, in 1 Peter, we see Peter saying to us in, in chapter 5, verse 9, Be sober. Don't be drunk with the cares of the world and, and the worries and the fears of things going on today. There's so much going on today. My goodness. If you try to keep up with everything, you'll drive yourself nuts. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be, what's vigilant? You're, where you're determined. You're, you're, you're determined. You're not going to be just kind of casual about your Christianity. You're not going to be casual about your relationship with, with the Lord. You're going to be vigilant. Be sober, be vigilant before your adversary. Who's your adversary? Satan, who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's not going to be able to devour everybody. If you stand up to him, if you stand up and speak the word of God, he'll have to flee. Amen? Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the enemy, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You gotta learn to resist, amen? We learn to resist by what the Word of God says and we speak the Word of God. So important, we call ourselves Word of Faith, Word of Faith people, but a lot of times we never speak the Word of Faith. We're always speaking doubt, unbelief, worry, care, all that stuff. But you gotta guard your heart and guard your thoughts, and guard your mind, amen? It's important that you do that because that's where he likes to attack is right there in your heart and in your mind. You get you thinking certain things and all of a sudden you think them over and over and over. And, and, and then fear comes up. We'll talk about that probably before this message is over. But then you get doing things that are adverse to what the, uh, the, what the Bible says. So guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So you guard what you put in. <laughs> this computer like mine that you got, you got to put in the right things. You can't be putting in the wrong things all the time because what you put in will be what comes out. And the old saying is, when your bucket gets kicked, you always find out what's inside. So we don't want to go there. Now, what else is, uh, we get short-sighted. How many of you got, you got to have a, 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 a vision for goals and for forward, going forward? That's what Paul said in the Philippians chapter 3 again. He says, forgetting those things that lie behind. What he was saying is, I can remember them, but I choose not to because I want to go forward. I press on. I, I, uh, I press on to the, the mark of the uh, calling that's in Christ Jesus, the prize of the calling that's in Christ Jesus. I forget that stuff, and let's go on. What else you got for me, Lord? What else you want me to do? How do you want me to, to live my life, continue to live my life? I don't want to be a flash in the pan. I don't want to be able to uh, one day serve in you, and the next day I'm out and gone. Listen, I've been around a long time in, in, in this church, and I've been a, a associate for a long time, and I've seen people come, excited, get all turned on, and the next thing you can't find them. You call them, oh, well, I got busy. I got distracted. Listen, you should let nothing distract you from your relationship with Jesus Christ because there's, <laughs> there's a future that lasts eternity. So don't, don't, don't get, go off and get the, the things that are just temporal because they're going to pass away. I don't care. You, all the stuff, all the accolades, all the money, all the, all the uh, things you, you acquire in this life are going to be gone. So we have to be careful what, what we do. Don't, don't, don't uh, deny what God has for you. So we have to have a, a vision. That's what Habakkuk talks about. <laughs> Habakkuk 2. Write the vision, make it plain, so others can follow it. 
and you can you can follow it. I mean, you know, you want to get behind somebody who's got a vision of doing something for Christ. We got a vision to see more people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized. Wow, exciting times. We don't want to give it up for the devil. And let, well, you just never know what the devil's going to do. Yeah, we know what he's going to do. He's out to get your life and, and, uh, and do away with you. But we're not. God's not. He said, come on in. I got room for everybody. Just believe on my son. Amen? Amen. Over in... Uh, over in Hebrews 10, 36, I'll turn to that. Uh, it talks about running your race with endurance. How many of you know we need to run with endurance? How many of you have ever run any kind of a race? We've been going to track meets for our granddaughters, and, and you have to run the race. I mean, to tell you that <laughs> now you may not be the fastest person on the, on the circuit, but you have to finish, and you have to endure some things. You, you may not feel good, especially the distance runners and stuff. But... It says in Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verse 36, For you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You run with endurance. You don't give up. You don't lose short-sightedness. You know, uh, I watch those track meets, and it's amazing. You watch these, uh, we watch the girls more than the boys because that's what we <laughs> go to watch. And then we usually don't stay the whole meet because those meets will be four or five hours. But... Thankfully, the girls we watch run in the first part of it, so we're there a couple hours, which is nice. But you watch those distance runners run the mile, and, and they'll run, and there's especially one girl in, for St. Joe that runs. She is really, really good. And she separates herself, and she'll run with that same pace all the time, just constant, constant. But you know what? She gets within 100, 125 yards, and she's still got a kick. She, she lets it loose. Isn't that something? That's how we're supposed to run, with endurance. So you, you can run that final lap. You can run that last uh, 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 you know, uh, length of, of the race and, and run it with some endurance. But it goes on to say, for you have a little while, and he will come, will, who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Wow. He said, don't draw back. Don't, don't stop. You know, uh, a lot of times in, when you see the, the four by fours, uh, when they run, realize the four by two, four by four, four by one, you got to pass that baton. You know what I mean? That's part of what we do is, as, as we get older. We want to pass on what God has done for us and give it into the others. Right here in this church, there's been generation after generation come along. We want to make sure the next generation gets the baton gets to run with it. Amen? Amen. But he says, don't draw back. Don't stop. You know, sometimes you see people just stop. One thing I was always impressed with out there watching this track meet, you'll have a couple of those, especially that mile runner, that 1600. The, the, some of the girls will be way out in front, and then you have two or three. Just barely, get, you know, they, the, the race is over for everybody except two, maybe one or two people. But you know what? They never stopped. They just kept right on going. Now, <laughs> they did what they knew to do. They ran with endurance. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. We just keep pressing on. Don't draw back. I press on, Paul said. That's what we should do. So there's, there's a, re, a reason we do that, because we want to get the prize. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, over in Hebrews chapter 12, I've read this before because I, I love this, because it just follows chapter 11, which is a hall of faith, they call it, and where people have done such and such down through the history of time. Uh, it says, therefore, since we also are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Now, he's not saying... Uh, uh, there's witnesses. What was it? People that have ran their race and completed it, where we can read about it and we can, it's in the Word of God. We've seen people do mar miraculous things with God's help. Well, that should be us. But it says, let us lay aside every weight. How many of you know where to lay aside every weight? What's a weight? Something that causes distraction, causes separation from the things of God. You know, we all fall into that. 
I fall into it. I gotta, I gotta get myself up and get going. You know, sometimes it's just so easy to sit in your easy chair and not get up. You gotta make yourself get up and go. You, you know, people do that at work a lot of times. They'll, they'll never be late to work, but they'll be late to church, or they won't. They'll skip church. You can't skip the things you really need the most, which is the word of God and 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 the gathering together of oneself. But and weight is a distraction. It's going to pull you away. And the sin which so easily ensnares us. What, what ensnares you? What is something the enemy wants to bring back time and again? And, you know, you see people that, that fall uh, privy to uh, if they've been in a, an addiction somewhere. And all of a sudden, they go for a while. Then they slip back in. Why? They've taken their mind off the prize. They've taken their mind off the things of God. And they let, that, let those thoughts come into their mind. you got to kick those thoughts out. You got to tell them to get out in Jesus' name. You're not grabbing me. You're not taking me back down the, the, the road of destruction. No. So you got to uh, lay aside, uh, let us lay, run, and then it says, lay aside the, the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run. <laughs> oh, I, I get back to that. You know, most of us uh, at my age, I don't run as much as I used to. I still run. I play a little sports, you know, where you have to run a little bit. And once in a while, I'll go out and run a little bit. But I don't run much. But I, I continue to move on. Move, uh, you know, don't stop. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Endurance. Don't give up. Don't quit. <laughs> in fact, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, increase your endurance. You know, um, I used to run the section out here in St. Joe. It was, I don't know, four-something miles. And when I first started running that section years ago, I could run about one, one-fourth of it. And then I'd be, oh, my gosh, I can't run anymore. Well, little by little, as I kept running, I'm telling you, I could run that section, and I was had strength to keep on running. A lot of times I'd run on by my house because I, was, I had endurance. I, I was re- Why? One step at a time, one step at a time. That's how we should do our Christianity. Do it. Whatever he says to do, be obedient and do it. One step at a time. Well, you missed it though. Okay, get back up, get going. Amen? Amen. Now, how do we do that? There's a way to do that. The only way we can do that, looking unto Jesus. Oh my gosh. (laughs) If you're not looking at the Jesus for your help, looking up from where your help comes from, you're not going to get it. The world's not going to help you. Your old ways aren't going to help you. The only one that's going to help you is Jesus. So you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of what? Our faith. Amen. Amen. This is what we believe for. Who for the joy. Joy? What do you mean joy? There's a divine joy. We'll talk about that someday. A divine joy, not just a uh, happiness because something went well for you. You got a new car, so I'm joyous. Well, that car is going to get old real quick, and you're probably going to have to fix it time and again or whatever. But joy comes from the Holy Ghost, and it comes from God. Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him endured what? Endured the heartache, the temptation, the sins of the whole world, endured the cross. How? But there was joy there. It didn't mean he was, oh, I'm so joyous, I'm hanging on a cross. No, but the, for the joy that was set before him. What was that? That was knowing he had done the will of God, fulfilled the plan and purpose for his life, run, run his race, and had, and had finished that course where he can look down the road and see us. See us. The ones that have accepted him now have eternal life. Everlasting, eternal life. Amen. With God the Father. That was his whole desire. Amen. And you know what? He 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 paid the price for the whole world. Now the whole world won't receive him. Why? Because we're free moral agents. We're free to choose him or not to choose him. And and our choice is every day. Am I going to serve God today? Or am I going to serve myself and the devil and the devil? You have to make that choice. But he says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And you know what? He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, but you know what he's doing now? He's forever making intercession for us, ever praying for us. And you know what? I, I don't know exactly what he's praying, but I know like when I'm at the, at the race 
and and with or one of my grandkids are running uh, and they running by I'm going go 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 don't quit you know every parent out there every grandparent people are out there yelling at their kids yelling what keep on going don't stop Run, don't quit in the middle of the race and you know what those kids don't but you it's good to hear the cheers that's what we're to do and Jesus is sitting at the right end of the father praying <laughs> Help them, Lord. Help them. Just keep going. Don't, don't let them stop in the middle of the race. Now, we know that's so important. What else in the short time we have today? Well, don't have unhealthy desires. How do you do that? Well, I can't help it. I, yes, you can. You can choose what to think on. It's the reason we think on things that are adverse or contrary was we're putting too much input of that in our mind. Now, over in, uh, in uh, uh, Psalm 37, it, this is says, it says, delight yourself in the Lord. Wow, how do you delight yourself in the Lord? You think about his goodness, what he's done for you, that he died for you, that he gave his life for you, that he's ever, ever making intercession for you. He's there cheering you on to, to run your race, right? And fulfill the plan and purpose that he has for your life. Delight yourself in him. Magnify him. That's what Psalm 34 says. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. M lift him up. M make a delight of him. And when you do that, it says, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you begin to listen to, you're, you're listening to the preaching and you're reading the word and you're praying and you're, lift, and you're praising the Lord with song and, 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 and thinking about his thing. Guess what's going to be on your mind? <laughs> he will keep thee in perfect peace, Isaiah said, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Why? Because you trust in him. You know he's going to give you good stuff. Amen? You know he knows the way. He knows the way before you ever thought about knowing the way. He knows what comes next. And he says, come on, you can do this. You know, delight yourself in me. I got, this, I got some desires I want to give you. And they'll be my desires. So, so don't worry about what the world's doing. Don't, look, don't get caught up into that. Come over here in, the, in, that, in that area that gives you delight. And lighten yourself, lighten the load off of yourself, and you'll begin to see the the, uh, the presence of God work in your life. Amen, amen. So it's important that we delight ourselves in the Lord. Uh, a lot of people never do that. They never, never uh, get to a place where they're they're always down. Usually, it's because of what they're saying to themselves. Listen, I'm gonna tell you today: don't talk negative. Don't talk negative about yourself. Don't put yourself down, ever. Now you're a child of the living God. I'm more than a conqueror. I've been forgiven. I'm no longer the old person I was. You gotta speak to yourself because it's so easy to not watch what you say. And listen, when you begin to say adverse things contrary to the word of God, that's what you're gonna have eventually. Because you ever, uh, what is it, Murphy's Law that where nothing ever went good? Well, I suppose Murphy uh, was probably saying, well, nothing ever good happens for me. I just am never going to make it. I'm never, I'm never going to measure up. Listen, you're in Christ now. You measure up because of what he did. Maybe you didn't measure up in first part of your, early part of your life or, or somewhere down the road, but now you can. Begin to change what you say. And as a man thinketh, the scripture says, Proverbs 27, 3, 7 says, as a person thinketh, so are they. What are you thinking? Well, this is what I used to do, but here's what I am and who I am now. It's what the Bible says. And when you begin to do that, guess what? Your, your delight begins to change because you delight in the Lord. I'm so thankful. I hope you are today that when I was lost, going my own way, running down the road of destruction, that he intercepted me. He, he full body tackled me. Amen. It's been over 40 some years, but I can still remember that night in the hotel room. I can still remember where I'd been before. Sure, I can remember all the things I've done, but that's the old man. It's no longer the old man that lives, but the new man. I put on the new man every day. This is who I am now. And, and this, I tell people that. I don't go around saying, well, I'm not worthy. I know, we weren't worthy, but he did it anyway. So now I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, and old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's where we need to be. Because if we don't, we won't be able to run and finish our race. 
our endurance will rear out before we get halfway around the track. And, then, and we won't be pleasing unto God, but we won't be pleasing unto ourselves either. And we're no match for the devil without God and without the Holy Spirit and without what Jesus has done for us. So make a point. Make a point to do. Uh, I know I didn't even get to the stuff we were going to talk about today, but that doesn't matter. What matters is, is we stay on course. We keep running our race, run it to the final uh, destination. And when we, when we die, guess what? That destination will be heaven. And I'm so happy to say I'm, that's, I'm on my way to heaven. I don't care what our people say. It's because of what Jesus has done. Are you on your way to heaven? You know, if you're not tonight, call upon his name. The Bible says, who shall ever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm an, I, was, I was a sinner, but Lord, I thank you that you died for me, shed your blood for me, buried and rose again the third day. I believe I believe in you, Jesus. Come into my life. And he will. He, that's a promise. He, he's not going to hold back any good thing from you. So do that. But continue to walk the line. Continue to run the race in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you set out a course for each one of us. A plan, a purpose, a way that where there seemed to be no way, you made a way. You make a way for us to live a life that's pleasing unto you. And when we leave this earth, we go to the promise of the Father, which is heaven <laughs> heaven uh, that we can't even imagine now, but it's going to be greater than anything we've ever known. I thank you for everyone who's sound my voice will be diligent, diligent to seek you and run after you and finish their course. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to be with you. I'll see you next time. Yeah.